What's the word? Wobble, baby. <laughs> wobble. That's not the word I wanted to hear. <laughs> What's the word? It's going to rain. Oh, that's not it either. Um, it's Monday. Ah, uh, never mind. I don't know. <laughs> It's Monday morning, we're back on site. Wow, there's a big tree down there. Um, glad that didn't hit the house. Anyway, we're back on site. We're gonna start the outside finish, starting up top with the soffits and fascia. And since my debit card got stolen, I'm late. I actually had serious concerns about this roof blowing off of the house during the storm because that morning, my wife's nephew had his metal roof completely blow off of his house. Dang. That's a big problem. Then, so this was April 1st, Jason, April fools to me and called me and told me that his camper roof blew down and landed on his camper. And then it was super windy and stormy. Jono sent me a picture of this tree branch right beside our house. And we haven't put the truss lock screws in to tie mm. the roof down yet, <laughs> right? It's just held yeah. on by three inch framing screws. How's your camper? Smashed. <laughs> okay, that didn't happen, but he had me going on April Fool's. I mean, I actually believed him. I, he had me going for like five minutes. Well, it was believable because of all the other stuff that happened, so whatever. Gotcha. It may look like Jamie's making like a mattress sale sign, like side of the road, spin your sign kind of thing, but that's a real piece of blocking. Where's it go? Goes in the corner of the soffit there. We're gonna make a miter joint, I think, in the soffit, and we need some support behind that to nail to, so this will do the trick. Now, let's see if I got this the right length. Since the corner I measured to is missing, so. Uh, seven sixteenths. No, there's one of them. One. <laughs> Dude, this thing seriously weighs like 15 pounds. I know. I think my shoulders are bigger already. We decided to go ahead and do all this cross blocking for the soffits. We're gonna use the LP Smart side 16 inch wide soffit material. And I don't know if it's necessary. I don't know if it can just span the 16 inches. I know we need to do it at the butt joints. Yeah. But we just decided to do it everywhere. Hey, perfection, it's what we are. Well, I don't know. <laughs> they don't know that. Got something in the mail for you. What is that? Squ Squidjig. A who? From a guy named Alex, who I have no idea who it is, but it's got your name on it. What? Must be yours. Wow, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got one for me in the truck there? I yeah. It was just me. Hmm. Uh, Your bubble's slow. <laughs> wow, that bubble's so slow. Be like, hurry up, is it level? Hang on, man. Never do. Going down the line here ahead of Jason, just taking all these numbers and writing them on the wall so that he can just come down, yell out a number, John I will cut it, and he'll nail it in. Wow, that one's different. 14 and 3 16 Check this fascia. That looks good there. The wall must just dip in a little. Seven years he's been driving and I almost didn't recognize him because he didn't have his sunglasses on. I've this never seen your first eyes. First time. Right on. Right on. I'll remember this moment forever. <laughs> <laughs> no it Better isn't down, sunny man. though. That's really, it's cloudy today. That's really weird. Here's the deal. We're going to have to use some air powered nailers, pneumatic nailers to put our siding and trim on. And we don't have an air compressor to use except that tiny little one that makes the most awful sound you've ever heard. And I can't stand the thought of listening to it here at the job. So I got this Makita and I'm only hoping that it's going to sound like a kitten purring. <laughs> have you, you heard one, right? I see one on your collar. When the, <laughs> <laughs> we are all blocked out for soffits up here. And unfortunately rain is setting in for the rest of the day. 
So we're gonna go to the shop, do some piddling around, do something fun, and we'll be back tomorrow. This video is brought to you by Vever Tools, and they've been a longtime sponsor of our YouTube channel, so we appreciate that. And today we're checking out their powered drywall sander, and I really feel like a Ghostbuster wearing this thing around. It's pretty awesome. This sander has 900 watts of self-suction power, and it makes it efficient at collecting up to 90% of the dust, which is super important if you've ever done drywall. It is messy, and it's really important to collect most of the dust you can get while you're doing it so you don't have a huge mess later. It's also equipped with a constant power board and added overboard protection, resulting in a longer, more stable, and more efficient lifespan than ordinary motors. Using a powered sander like this for drywall mud is going to be way faster, less labor of course, but the best thing I think is you're going to turn out with a better product in the end that's going to have a flatter surface by using something that's powered versus a hand sanding pole that doesn't have any sort of rotary action in it. And this thing is pretty well balanced. It, it doesn't feel bulky or too heavy. Um, I think they said it's a three to seven weight ratio, which feels great. It also has this extendable handle at the end and as you can see, you can reach way up high so hopefully no ladder work my sander also came with two packs of nine inch six hole assorted grit sandpaper and that'll last me for a while and the reason i really wanted this tool is not for sanding drywall it's for sanding primer for us because when we paint if you don't go back and sand the primer after and then you go paint it's going to look terrible forever so that's one of the very labor intensive things that we have to do and the finish out every job so that's my plan for this thing other features on this tool are adjustable speed with this little knob on the handle. It also has a gate for adjustable suction, and it came with this hose and this bag. So it's all in one, which is nice. You don't have to have a vacuum, but you could hook this hose to a vacuum if you wanted to get extra suction or if you didn't want to wear the bag. And like all of Ever's tools, the sander is a great deal. If you're on a budget, it's only $105.99 regularly. But if you click the link in our video description and use the code VVPRO, you can get 5% off of that. So make sure to check it out. Thanks again to Vever for sponsoring our video. Let's get back to work. Good news, it's not too loud. It's not advertised as a quiet or silent air compressor, but it is pretty quiet. And it's not annoying sounding. Really, it's the sound of the sound that I was concerned with. Get off of me with this. I'm already ticked. What's wrong? <laughs> oh, the lie. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, was, I thought we just weren't going to address the elephant in the room. 18 and a half, really. Uh, let's see. It, it truly should right be there. right there. We are all set up for our first bit of fascia here, and Jamie's making us prefab outside mitered corners with short legs so that they're easy to maneuver, we'll get a perfect corner. And this is over two full boards anyway, lengthwise, so it's gonna be a butt joint somewhere. Make it easy. Why we gotta talk about short legs? Huh? Short legs? <laughs> Tan legs. Tan legs. Oh, look at this thing. Woo! Woo! I'm good there. Oh, oh shoot there. So your neighbor got a donkey? Yeah. What? What? This morning that thing was going crazy. I don't I don't know where it's coming from, but all of a sudden I just How do you hide a donkey? You have a donkey? I, no, somebody <laughs> in my neighborhood has a donkey. You that in your <laughs> somebody in your neighborhood has a donkey. Okay. Got your spacer down there. So I'm gonna start at this end and work back your way, Jay. I'm just gonna go flush here. Okay, uh, up a little, up, 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 yep. Down, 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 yep, that's good. Yep. Now what? You got a pull on it. Mm. 
That'll make it easier. Um, I'm pretty good on gap here. We've got some fascia board and some soffit run here. What we're gonna do now is seal everything up. We're gonna put zip tape up top here to seal the top edge. We're gonna do big stretch along this joint or gap between the fascia and the soffit. Nate's in a special guns. We work with the company that makes big stretch. They make premium products. They cost a little more, but work a lot better, which is really worth it on high work like this. You don't wanna get back up and have to do this again ever. Yep. Oh yeah. You know I'm putting a lot of trust in you doing that cop job up there, right? <laughs> I mean, how hard can it be, bro, really? Well. Uh... Ah! Don't worry, Ray's not staring at you. Right now. Okay. <laughs> We're spacing with a GRK screw that's about 3 16 You could also use like your speed square, that part of it, it's 3 16 usually. And that'll give us room for our sealant, big stretch, and that'll also give room for these to expand and contract a little bit without wanting to buckle. Yeah. Why is that train going like right now? Come to me. Yep. Stand it. He's up there. I feel like Stephanie's on the job with me. Does Stephanie look like bearded? Yeah, I hope. <laughs> Do I look no. that good? I mean, just keep an eye. Wow, Ray must be really just looking good. Just keep an eye on everything I'm doing. I'm getting ready to build a big platform up in the attic. I even had special trusses designed and built to accommodate the heating and air conditioning equipment up there. Because of all the webbing in a normal truss, there just wouldn't be a large enough open space uh, for the equipment to sit in. Uh, but it's just large enough to have the platform for the equipment and a workspace for anybody that's gonna service the equipment. That's the purpose of this platform. So they don't have to walk across the edges of the joists and hope that they don't step on the drywall and fall through the ceiling, which happens all the time, actually. Even Jason did that. That pretty much wraps up the platform there for the heating and air stuff. I do have to cut out this hole. I've decided I'm gonna take a drill bit and pilot the four corners from the bottom, just drill through, and then I can actually draw a line around the top and cut with a skill saw. That'll make it a lot easier for me, I think. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed doing that platform because I think you gotta do another one. Yeah. Exactly like that one. I was trying to think of the word uh, deja du plex. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm having. I okay, think it's yeah, a all right. condition. All right. I think it is a condition. We don't like to brag much, but Jason was pretty proud of our miter joint here and how just perfect it turned out. How'd we do that? Um, so we didn't just assume that the house was totally square. We didn't just take a long number and then cut a 45 on it. We actually took numbers long and short. And yep. what Eric did is on this other piece is he took a scrap and made marks on where they're going to be. Because if we just went to the edge of the house... That's not it. It's not it. So you got to make sure you mark and measure where that piece is going to stop. So we did that on both pieces and it came out awesome. I don't want to brag, but <laughs> that, I want to be on how you do that. That's how to do it. I don't want to brag, but we pretty much are the best. <laughs> <laughs> so we got this one section left, but I think we can get it off uh, maybe two ladders and leave everything set up where it is, yeah. what do you think? I say so, and I think... Uh, get the low stuff, we'll be all done here. Done with this. Then you can paint it all, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm really trying to fill the gap with the big stretch here to make sure that there's plenty of the sealant to stretch with any movement. And that's how you do it. If you just put it on the surface, it could potentially be bad. So leave a gap, fill it up. This stuff will stretch with pretty much anything. We've been in the laboratory, actually. I don't want to sound like a commercial, but we've been in the laboratory and saw like the full stretch, what it can do, and then it'll go back to where it was. It's pretty crazy. They even let him in the laboratory. It smells great, dude. <laughs> Everyone's in a great mood. Like, yeah. <laughs> Windows. That's a nice house on that truck. Look at that thing. Wow. This is like a big empty truck. <laughs> 
you got a truck that'll do the job right there. Right? Big step. No you want to hang getting it up? Let's get somebody else on the deck no, here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Dude, if you do that step backwards. No, you're going to get hurt. You're going to get hurt. Oh, uh, you're so close. Pick it up, bro. Yep. Yeah. All right, coming up. Uh, we have to lay it to the side a little, yeah. Mm hmm. Let's go uh, in the hallway. It's about two o'clock. We've got the whole upper overhang done, which is faster than normal because it's all flats. There's no gable ends. Now we're gonna see if we can get the front and the back porches done, just the soffits and fascia. Bubble level on my speed square here to double check my 412 is plumb. So right, there's the four, and it does look plumb, because that's level. Wait, why couldn't you have done that on the other side? I could have done that on the other side, I just didn't think of it. Yeah. See? He had an epiphany. Had an epiphany, epiphanized. There you go, he'd say. I didn't think I knew that one, did you really? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was nice. I guess just butt yours and run to me. A little butt and run. <laughs> a little butt and run. A little butt and run. Do you think we need to notch around this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little butt and run. Hey, you know, you'll see that on the big job. You'll see that on the job, that's big. Yeah. Little butt and runs. It's 10 times. 100. Maybe small, but it's mighty. And a half long, 109 sixteenths. Yeah, I'm about an eighth off already. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'm pretty good here. I mean, I'm oh, there was dirt in the end of that. You mind to uh, pick that ladder up for a second, Jay? Jamie's figuring out the miter cut here. It's the difference between these two angles, an 812 and a zero. What's your pitch? Uh, it's a 13 degree cut will be the miter. That doesn't look right? No, but I think it is right. <laughs> it doesn't look right, but he thinks it is right. No, it looks way wrong because if this was the right angle, then this piece that I cut off should have fit. Right. If right. they're both the same angle. Right. <laughs> We're gonna need some more caulk. Here's my guess. I used this piece that has the ripped top on it and the face, the show face, is less width than yeah. this piece. Mm -hmm. So it is virtually mitering two different widths of boards together which would produce different angles or would it yeah it would yeah it's yeah it would because it's one's coming in this way one's coming in there hitting at a different point uh, well we could speculate uh, no. for a long time is that you guys no i didn't order it. No. what <laughs> yeah. i see that it worked out it did i what guess was i the got deal? lucky here's the deal the total of the two angles added together equals 34 degrees, which is an 812. Page. 812. So yeah. 812, those two angles add up correctly, okay. but they're different. One is 13 and one is 21. And why is that? Well, why? But well, why? I got to say, though, the only thing in my mind that I was chasing after is wherever the bottom of this one hit, the bottom of that one, that's where you cut it. Mm, right? Yep, That's the only yeah, thing yeah. that matters. Priority. Arlo's cross-checking every statement that. you're making I, I'm just, right no, here. I'm, I, no, I'm, <laughs>
Did you figure it out? No. You gonna blow my pouch out? You wanna get, yeah. You wanna get blown? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can say that, but yeah, hit me. Nice. Yeah, that's better.